ના ફ્લાઇટ માં નેક્સ્ટ એક્સપ્લેનેશન ઓફ ડાયફ્રેક્શન ઓન ધ બેસિસ ઓફ ધ વેવ થિયરી ઓફ લાઇટ એક્સપ્લેનેશન ઓફ ડાયફ્રેક્શન ઓન ધ બેસિસ ઓફ વેવ થિયરી ઓફ લાઇટ ધ વેવ થિયરી ઓફ લાઇટ હેડ ઇટ્સ બિગિનિંગ ઇન હાઇજન્સ એટેમ્પ્ટ્સ ટુ એક્સપ્લેન ધ ડબલ રિફ્રેક્શન ઓફ લાઇટ ઇન ક્રિસ્ટલ 1678 હી પુટ ફોરવર્ડ ધ આઈડિયા નોન લેટર હિઝ હાઇજન્સ પ્રિન્સિપલ હી પુટ forward the idea known later as huygens principle that each point in a wavefront becomes a source of each point in a wavefront becomes a source of secondary wavelets and the new wavefront in the envelope of these secondary wavelets it is not certain whether the huygens knew about cremolles uh, gram uh, gramnolles experiments on diffraction huygen was very careful in showing how his principle was in conformly with the law of propagation of light in straight lines ma so the wave theory of light had it beginning in eigen's attempts to explain the double refraction of light in crystals ma in 1678 he, he put the forward the idea known later the huygens principle that each point in a wavefront become a source of secondary wavelets and the new wavefront in the envelope of these secondary wavelets it is not certain whether huygens knew for gramnolles experiments of diffraction next we'll go for a simple mathematical approachment for the understanding of diffraction of light the huygens and the fresnel theory in the wave theory of light uh, huygens and diffraction phenomena gives the clarity ma now we will go for the on the basis of wave theory of light uh, explanation of diffraction means mathematical approachment of diffraction ma so huygens fresnel theory is based on two principles the huygens fresnel theory is based on two principles one is the huygens principle one is the principle of interference supplemented by the principle of superposition first one is the huygens principle second one is the principle of interference supplemented by the principle of superposition ma first huygens principle states that each point in the wave front one each point in the wave front one becomes a source of secondary waves each point in a each point in the wave front becomes a source of secondary waves and sends out secondary wavelets the wave front at a later time the wave front at a later time is the envelope two of the secondary wavelets as they have moved out in the time t as they have moved out in time as they have moved out in the time t each point in two then become a source of secondary waves and their envelope gives and their envelope gives the next position of the and their envelope gives the next position of the wave front thus the propagation of light thus the propagation of light is explained in terms of the advancing thus the propagation of light is explained in terms of the advancing wave fronts when one such wave front reach a point we say that light was propagating from source of uh, source to the point this is a very nice way of describing propagation of this is a very nice way of describing propagation of light when the wave fronts are infinite in extent and not obstructed and the full wave front is allowed to proceed forward direction therefore fresnel tried to think about what would happen when the whole wave front was not allowed to proceed further but only a certain part which which could get through an aperture so that uh, first uh, first uh, b a b and uh, then e d ma here what it is said is the distance between first wave front to second one and experiments like grimals had shown when the observation point p observation point p on the screen is well inside the cone nothing strange happens at p but near the edge of the shadow diffraction bands called fringes diffraction band called fringes appear and the light is uh, and, and the light in this region does not obey the straight line and the light uh, the, and the light in this region does not obey the straight line propagation law then the explanation of diffraction is it audible na soumya mamata janaki durga devi 
Yes, ma'am. It's audible. Okay. You have books, ma'am, or you have PDFs only? Books, ma'am. Okay. You take it now. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Are you following my so interference completed? Now we'll go for diffraction, ma'am. Here explanation and the uh, diffraction part is there in your books. I will. Uh, Mm, what it is uh, share screen of the topic and explanation given ma okay ma'am is there any doubt in interference and uh, previous topics ma no ma'am okay now we'll go for frenal and fraunhofer diffraction ma before going to that secondary wavelets how it is uh, formed and it is given in the first figure, figure here Huygens principle applied to a secondary wavelet from a narrow opening. How it is made to explain diffraction? Fresnel uses Huygens idea of secondary waves starting out from every point in that part of the wave front. Every point in that part of the wave front which is not obstructed to find the effect of the secondary waves. To find the effect of the secondary waves, so that he, he used the principle of superposition. Therefore, the resultant effect is then given as the sum of the effects due to all these secondary waves. So one can say that the secondary waves produce. Uh, one can say that the secondary waves produce interference, and there may be a bright fringe or dark fringe, and there may be a bright fringe or dark fringe depending on how the secondary waves add up. So that in account their relative fringes. Thus, in the Huygens Fresnel's theory of diffraction, one calculates the diffraction pattern as the interference pattern due to the very large number of due to the very large number of waves coming from the very large number of waves coming from the several points in the exposed parts of the wave front. So we shall carry out this program for we shall carry out this program for some simple cases of diffraction in the next three lessons. So that we conclude this lesson by explaining the uh, usual classification of diffraction phenomena into two types, namely first one, Fraunhofer, and second one is Fresnel diffraction phenomena. Okay, next top uh, continuation is Fresnel and Fraunhofer. Ma, here in Fresnel and Fraunhofer diffraction, mainly we are giving five points. Ma, what it is in Fresnel uh, Fraunhofer diffraction? Source and screen are infinity um, in infinity distance from the uh, obstacle. Ma. Source and screen are at infinity distance from the obstacle. That is Fraunhofer. Source and screen are at finite distances from the obstacle. That is Fresnel's diffraction. In Fraunhofer diffraction, source and screen are at infinity distances from the obstacle. In Fresnel diffraction, source and screen are at Finite distances from the obstacle. In second point, the wave front, uh, the wave front incident on obstacle, the wave front, uh, the wave front incident on obstacle in the form of plane wave fronts. The wave front incident on the obstacle in the form of a plane wave fronts. In uh, Brenner's, the wave front incident on the obstacle in the form of cylindrical or spherical. In the form of cylindrical or spherical mass. In Fraunhofer diffraction, lenses are used. In Fraunhofer diffraction, lenses are used for making the rays. Lenses are used for making the rays are parallel. But in Fresnel diffraction, low, no lenses are used. In Fresnel diffraction, we are not using any lenses. Okay, ma. Lenses are used for making the rays parallel in Fraunhofer diffraction. But in Fresnel diffraction, no lenses are used. But in uh, Fraunhofer diffraction, the experimental arrangement is critical, means complicated. In Fraunhofer diffraction, the experimental arrangement is complicated or critical. But in uh, Fresnel diffraction, the experimental arrangement is the Fresnel diffraction, the experimental arrangement is uh, simple. They are complicated means here simple. Now the mathematical analysis is simple in Fraunhofer diffraction. In Fraunhofer diffraction, the mathematical analysis is simple. In Fresnel diffraction, the mathematical analysis is complicated. In Fresnel diffraction, the mathematical analysis is complicated. And in Fraunhofer diffraction, mathematical analysis is 
simple. So uh, how the finite and infinite distances will be shown in next two figures. Okay. Ma? These are mainly five points we can uh, identify in Fennel and Fraunhofer according to these diagrams and matter. So first one, what it is ma? Finite distances, infinite distances. Wave fronts are spherical, wave fronts are plane. Lenses are used for making parallel beam in Fraunhofer. Lenses not used in Fresnel. The experimental arrangement is critical in Fraunhofer. The experimental arrangement is simple in Fresnel's diffraction. The mathematical analysis is simple, Fraunhofer diffraction. The mathematical analysis is complicated in Fresnel's diffraction. Okay, one can use an ordinary spectrometer or whose collimator and telescope have been adjusted for parallel beams to study the Fraunhofer diffraction patterns, to study the Fraunhofer diffraction patterns of various objects, Fraunhofer diffraction of objects by adjusting the, um, by adjusting or placing the objects, slits, etc on the spectrometer table and observing the pattern through the and observing the pattern through the telescope now it, the last figure shows the lens l forming the image of point source located at infinity on the screen so last figure shows the lens forming the image of a point source located at infinity located at infinity on the screen it, it, in a, it is an aperture ab is placed near the lens Di diffraction fringes appears on the screen the diffraction fringes appears on the screen surrounding the point where the image should be according to a where the image should be according to the geometrical optics this is nothing but the Fraunhofer diffraction due to aperture this is nothing but the Fraunhofer diffraction due to aperture a b to understand this imagine to understand this imagine the lens l to be replaced by two lenses l1 and l2 on either sides of a b with focal lens equal to sl and l4 respectively either sides of focal lens we can take the S1, uh, SL and L1 respectively. Then L1 produces parallel rays, which the incident, uh, which the incident on AB and L2 focuses the diffraction, diffracted parallel rays in its focal plane. But this is just the way a Fraunhofer diffraction pattern is seen. There is an important conclusion to be drawn for that figure in optical instruments where an image of a certain object is formed by lens. So the, the image is the image of star is an astronomical telescope. The image is really the Fraunhofer diffraction pattern of the aperture, which restricts light coming through the lens. So this uh, one and other Fresnel and Fraunhofer. A figure gives Fresnel diffraction. C figure gives Fraunhofer diffraction conditions produced by the lenses. Lenses sources S and screen C in their original position. Now, last figure is Fraunhofer diffraction for incident wave. Next, Fresnel and Fraunhofer diffraction mathematical approachment. Here we are taking a point Q is the source of secondary. A point Q is the source of secondary spherical waves. If the amplitude at Q, if the amplitude at Q is A, the light disturbance at P, distance D away not shown in the figure due to the spherical wave is given by the formula. Phi is equal to A by D cos of omega T phi is equal to a by d cos of omega t minus kd where omega is equal to angular frequency 2 pi f f is frequency t is time k is equal to 2 pi by lambda lambda is wavelength and omega t is equal to lambda d is equal to phase of the wave now following channel we know we now add the light disturbances due to all points between a and b so that the um, so that the resultant wave is given by a so that res resultant wave is given by a sum 
that is phi is equal to summation of a by d cos of omega t minus k d since point like o are continuously distributed so that so point like o are continuously distributed in the aperture a b the resultant light disturbance the resultant light disturbance may be written as an integral so that psi is equal to some integral of phi dr integral of a by d cos of omega t minus kd where r is the disturbance of q from the origin r in the diffraction aperture expression 15.1 and 15.2 in this equation on the basis of calculating the diffracting patterns in the simple way and will be used in the next three further units ma here what is the path difference what is the phase difference and finally what it is see here path ap is equal to d and path bp is equal to d plus delta then d plus delta whole square means expanding in the form of a plus b whole square then it is d plus delta whole square means d square plus b square that equal to 2 delta b the cos of uh, cos of phi by 2 plus delta plus theta so here theta is the angle between theta is the angle between ap and the normal to the screen a and simplifying this equation we are getting 2d delta plus delta square is equal to b square plus 2d b sin theta here we make an assumption which generally holds in practical situations here we make an assumption which generally holds in practical situations namely delta less than less than d which means that which means that p is sufficiently far away from ab which means that p is sufficiently far away from ab thus in above equation we may ignore delta square in comparison with 2 delta d higher order terms can be neglect ma then we are taking uh, only uh, then above equation becomes 2 delta d is equal to b square plus 2b delta uh, 2b uh, d 2b capital d sin theta here the important formula makes the distinction between fresnel and fran hopper diffraction possible if d becomes very large means d tends to infinity delta equal to delta infinity that equal to b sin theta then above uh, the overall the final conclusion what we are taking here delta is equal to delta infinity is equal to b square by 2d that equal to b square by capital l that equal to lambda by 8 therefore b square by capital l is equal to lambda by 8 defines the boundary between fresnel and fran hopper gives the way, um, whether this is the fresnel and fran hopper pattern The, divi the dividing line we want is then given by delta e tends to delta infinity that equal to b square by 2d that equal to b square by l that equal to lambda by 8. Therefore, b square by l is equal to lambda by 8 defines the boundary between Fresnel and Fraunhofer diffraction. Then conclusion what we are taking is b square by l is equal to lambda by 8 for large value of l b square by l less than less than lambda here we can take the uh, for very small values for uh, large values what is the fraunhofer and fresnel for large value of lb square by l less than less than lambda giving fraunhofer diffraction for small <coughs> capital l b square by l is equal to lambda giving fresnel diffraction the so distinction of these two we are taking as fresnel and fraunhofer diffraction therefore for very small values of l b square by l greater than greater than lambda and we have fairly sharp shadows showing practically no fringes that is uh, that is straight line propagation is observed this can be summarized as follows therefore fraunhofer diffraction b square by l lambda less than less than 1 fresnel diffraction b square by l is equal to 1 straight line propagation b square by l lambda greater than greater than one so the value of the dimensions constant the, so the value of dimensionless constant b square by 2 lambda decides the type of diffraction so the values of so the values of the dimensionless constant b square by 2 lambda decides the type of diffraction to be seen we shall illustrate this with the example 
so that let a beam of parallel rays of wavelength lambda is equal to 6 into 10 power 5 centimeter fall and opening of width b is equal to 0.1 then we are taken as consider three values of 1 three values of 1 is equal to 10 power minus 1 cm 1 cm is equal to 100 cm corresponding values of 1 is equal to 10 power minus 1 cm corresponding value of 1 is equal to 10 power minus 1 cm therefore Fresnel diffraction pattern showing fringes near the edge of the shadow in the case of uh, case eleven, and finally a Fraunhofer diffraction pattern consisting of a bright spot in the center, therefore surrounded by a fringes. Fraunhofer diffraction pattern consisting of a bright spot. Fraunhofer diffraction pattern consisting of a bright spot in the center, surrounded by fringes. In case चार्ट बोलना ना इस मैम ओके वन कैन प्रोड्यूस ए फ्रांकोपर्न पैटर्न एट ए स्क्रीन जस्ट ए मीटर आर सो अवे फॉर दिस ब्यूटीफुल एक्सपेरिमेंट कैन बी फर्फॉर्म इजीली विथ ए हीलियम नियॉन लेजर इजीली विथ ए हीलियम नियॉन लेजर Now this is the topic about Fresnel and Fraunhofer diffraction. Next we will go for Fresnel diffraction at a straight edge. Fresnel diffraction at a straight edge. In this lesson we discuss mathematical treatment of diffraction at a straight edge. Summary and sharp explanation uh, of uh, sample questions. Next in this unit Fresnel diffraction at a straight edge is explained. In order to make you understand, the apply uh, it applies the Huygens Fresnel theory of diffraction to wave front on a straight edge. Therefore, after going through this unit, you will be able to find out the amplitude and phase of the wave. The amplitude and phase of the waves reaching the screen from the elements in the wave front too. Therefore, the resultant the resultant disturbances at a point source the resultant disturbances at a point on the screen. Now, diffraction phenomena is the characteristics of wave motion. As we have seen in the unit fifteen, diffraction is not uh, uh, noticeable when a wave is distorted by an obstacle. When a wave is distorted by an obstacle which has dimensions, which has dimensions compar comparable to the wavelength of the comparable to the wavelength of the wave. Therefore, the obstacle may be a screen. The obstacle may be a screen with a small opening or slit, which allows only a small portion of the which allows only a small portion of the incident wave front. Small portion of the incident wave front to pass. In this unit, we shall study the. In this unit, we shall study the Fresnel diffraction at a straight edge. Okay. Now, mathematical treatment of diffraction at straight edge means Huygens Fresnel theory uh, to Fresnel diffraction at a straight edge. Here shows the uh, uh, here the figure. Continuation next page figure is given for this ma. So here the figure uh, uh, shows the straight edge OS is extending to large distance beyond as a plane wave front is incident from the left. This figure ma. OS is the OS is extending to large distance beyond as a plane wave front is incident from the left. A plane wave front is incident from the left. Its portion along OS is completely stopped by is completely stopped by the straight edge and incident uh, from the left and uh, straight edge and the part extending along and path extending along OQ and beyond is allowed to pass. Elements along OQ become Huygens. Elements along OQ becomes Huygens secondary sources. And send the waves towards observation screen C. 
where these secondary waves combine where these secondary waves combine and produce the where these secondary waves combine and produce the diffraction pattern therefore the amplitude of a secondary wave the amplitude of a secondary wave from an element of length dh from an element of length dh situated at a distance h from edge o is proportional to the dh therefore the path difference between the waves from o to uh, those from q is those from q the path difference o to uh, which is uh, coming from q is delta that is h square by 2s therefore and the phase difference delta is equal to path difference into delta 2 pi by lambda into delta where is the distance between o and the corresponding p at the uh, edge of the geometrical shadow therefore this formula was divided into or derived from the before case so path difference and phase difference we are calculating that number that only final we have taken here which is dh dx is equal to dh into cos of 2 pi by lambda h square by 2s then dy is equal to dh into sin of 2 pi by lambda into h square by 2s that was shown in a vectorial representation of a wave that was shown in vectorial representation of a wave therefore we can find the resultant due to the waves from uh, from all hygen secondary sources in the wave front between o and q here we are discussing O and Q by integrating these by integrating these expressions between O and H, so the resultant X is equal to component A. Component A is equal to integral zero to H dH into cos of two by by lambda H square by X. Similarly, the resultant Y is equal to component of B. That equal to integral zero to h dh sine of s into two pi by lambda into h square by two s. Therefore, the resultant amplitude produced at the point, the resultant amplitude produced at the point p is equal to the length of the resultant vector. The resultant amplitude produced at the point p is equal to the length of the resultant vector. R phasor R now R is equal to under root of a square plus b square distance O T in figure. Therefore, so the vector O T represents the resultant wave. The phase are the phase of the resultant is phi. Now the point T represents the resultant of the disturbances from the elements along O Q is equal to H reaching the diffraction screen. As the length O Q is increased, the point T moves along a curve in a concerned equation 6.2 6.3 are the parametric parametric equations describing this curve therefore where h is the length ot along the curve let us now find the curve as h becomes very large they are considering as v is equal to h under root of 2 by lambda s therefore dx is equal to under root of lambda s by 2 into d v into cos of pi by 2 v square ma dy is equal to under root of lambda s by 2 dv sin of pi by 2 v square therefore further let us choose now x and y so we write dx is equal to dv cos pi by 2 v square dy is equal to dv sin pi by 2 v square we, we, we will write the new variables x and y also as x and y as no confusion shall arise so the slope of the curve at v is equal to dy by dx that equal to tan of pi by 2 v square the angle of the slope is theta that equal to pi by 2 v square therefore the curve is a spiral the end point is called asymmetric point asymmetric point that is reached as v tends to infinity. Therefore, its coordinates are x is equal to integral 0 to infinity cos of pi by 2 v square dv and y is equal to 0 to infinity sin of pi by 2 v square dv. Right edge, uh, not that much. Ma. So, single slit, double slit, and uh, diffraction grating is important. Kernel, uh, this right edge is a little bit confusion is there. 
next plane diffraction grating measurement of wavelength of light fran hopper diffraction pattern of single and double and multiple slits multiple slits is nothing but diffraction grating ma so measure, measure the wave so after going through this unit we will be able to measure the wavelength of light using grating understand how ghosts are formed in a grating spectra now fran hopper diffraction pattern of single double and multiple slits in fran hopper diffraction pattern of single double and multiple slits is obtained by an by an arrangements similar to that of figure 7.1 same how to take means next figure we will show that ma the slits are actually rectangular openings the slits are actually rectangular openings apertures with one side much smaller than the other with one side is much smaller than the other in multiple slit arrangements therefore rectangular apertures are separated by opaque strips or bars therefore this set of parallel slits and bars makes up the plane diffraction grating diffraction patterns obtained by plane diffraction grating in an arrangement as shown in next figure following figure ma therefore photo photographic plate placed in the focal plane of lens l2 therefore instant light contains several wavelengths ma the corresponding principal magma appear as a set of sharp lines on the photographic plate hence photographic shows a spectrum of instant light and we can calculate the wavelength using the formula for the principal magma for the principal magma and known as grating formula so here holo, this principle we are using in holographic uh, uh, what it is my spectroscopy also this this is the figure fan hopper diffraction pattern of a single double and multiple slits single double and multiple slits ma so the slit and bar grating is never used in spectroscopy where grating with n of the order of thousands of slits per centimeter is required therefore ingenious methods have been exploited to produce such fine slits with small spacing therefore the first practical grating was made by fran hopper in 18 the first practical uh, grating was made by fran hopper in 1819 Mm, greatly improved gratings were produced by H. R. Uh, Rowland in 1882. Therefore, these are the ruled grating. A diamond point moves on a glass surface and produces a groove. A screw that moves a diamond point to the next position and an identical groove you are getting, ma. And uh, it gives the uh, multiple reflections. therefore a simple apparatus for measuring the wavelength of light using a grating is the spectrometer you have learned about the spectrometer and then uh, spectrometer we uh, we have a collimeter which produces a parallel beam of light using narrow slit and convex lens therefore the parallel beam falls on the grating which is placed in a holder mounted on the prism table the diffracted light like uh, fresnel's by prism and lloyd's mirror we arrangement is uh, considering no more same as here also um, collimeter we can uh, arrange like that in the spectrometer we have a collimeter which produces a parallel beam of light using a narrow slit with a uh, narrow slit and a convex lens therefore the parallel beam falls on the grating which is placed in a holder mounted on the prism table therefore the diffracted light is seen through the telescope which is previously focused for parallel rays in the absence of the grating therefore uh, you must make sure that the lines in the grating are parallel to the slit of the collimeter now on the moving of telescope away from the direct position one can see the diffracted that was seen in uh, diffraction spectra in various orders here b plus d sin theta is equal to m lambda ma but that uh, what it is uh, we shall find the images of the slit of uh, various values of theta such that b plus d sin theta is equal to b plus d sin theta is equal to n lambda therefore in other words we are looking to the principal magma produced by grating the direct image of slit uh, seen through the telescope when it is lined when the collimeter is the principal magma 
with m is equal to zero. On either side of this, we have images of this slit corresponding to the principal maximum with m is equal to zero. On either side of this, we have images of this slit corresponding to the principal maximum with orders m is equal to plus or minus one, plus or minus two. Each principal maximum looks like a sharp image of the collimator slit. Therefore, n number of slits uh, in the grating is very large. So the experimental arrangement is shown in down figure ma. Here in the experimental describes above the rays are incident normally on the grating. Rays are incident normally on the grating. In general case, the incident ray makes an angle I with the normal to the grating. In the general case, the incident rays makes as uh, an angle I with the normal on, normal to the grating. It is easily seen that the path difference between ray diffracted by adjacent slits is now B plus D into sin I plus sin theta. This path difference is zero, which the diffracted rays proceed in the same direction, which the diffracted rays proceed in the same direction as that of the incident ray. In this case, B plus D into sin I plus sin theta is equal to zero and theta is equal to minus I. Therefore, you know, for the sign convention followed here, I and theta are taken as positive when they lie below the normal to the grating, when they lie below the normal to the grating as shown in figure. Now the equation of principal maximum is B plus D sin I plus sin theta is equal to M lambda, which is the diffraction grating mark or n number of slits. Next important topic are resolving power and dispersion of a grating. This is also a very, very important one. Next lesson, unit. Resolving power and dispersion of grating. This unit also discuss the dispersion and resolving power of diffraction grating. It uh, determines the limits of the resolving power. It determines the limits of the resolving power of an optical instrument by applying really certain criterion. Therefore, after going through this unit, after going through this unit, we will be able to determine the resolving power of a, we will be able to determine the resolving power of a grating. So first of all, in this uh, any uh, at any or all of which information may be lost, leading to the degradation of the instrument. Ma, when an op when any of the optical instrument like the telescope, microscope, prism, spectrometer, and grating spectrometer, etc., in use, information is conveyed by means of light from the object to the detector. Information is conveyed to the light by object to the detector. In this process, there are mainly three stages. Therefore, at any information or at any stage, all of which information may be lost leading to the degradation of the instrument. Therefore, first point, whether the light is capable of conveying the information, whether the light is capable of conveying the information depends on the relation of the wavelength to the size of detail. Therefore, this wavelength difficulty is fundamental. This wavelength difficulty is fundamental and has led to the development of electron microscopes and X-ray diffraction, etc. In all these cases, the use of wavelength, in all these cases, the use of wavelength much shorter than, <laughs> much shorter than those of light allow the information to be obtained at distances which are 10 power 3 to 10 power 4 times small than the optical wavelengths. D will be there will be imperfections in the optical system. There were there will be um, there uh, whether the there will be imperfections in the optical system, which is geometrical aberrations, uh, which can be avoided by good design and the effects of diffraction within the instrument are unavoidable, leading to the basic limit of performance. Now, the final image, the final image of any system will be formed on some detecting device, such as the retina of the eye, a photographic plate, or the surface of the television camera, etc. Such devices will have some sort of a 
such devices will have some sort of grid of detectors which will be of finite spacing which will be of finite spacing and will be unable to detect and will be unable to detect details smaller than the earth. So the diligence criteria here, the example of telescope used to observe two stars close together in the absence of focal plane to the best possible images. Here you can take the resolving power theta r is equal to sine inverse of um, 1.22. Simply the small cases what we are taking ma f theta is equal to uh, 1.22 lambda by d into f. For that only taking for resolving power it is theta r is equal to sine inverse of 1.22 lambda. Sine inverse of 1.22 lambda by d. Therefore, for very small angles, we can write theta r is equal to 1.22 lambda by d. It, it is known as religion's criteria. Important about that formula. What is religion's criteria means theta r is equal to 1.22 lambda by d. In this case, the maximum, in, in which case the maximum, if first pattern falling on the first minimum of the second, which are now separated by lambda by n. Where a being of being the slit width, where a being a, a being the slit width. Now dispersion of a grating, resolving power of grating and dispersion of grating. Next we derive the dispersion of grating formula. What it is ma d is equal to the dispersion d of grating is a measure of the angular separation produced between two incident monochromatic two incident monochromatic waves whose wavelength differ by a small wavelength interval. Nothing but dispersing power, d is equal to d theta by d lambda, angular dispersion to the difference of wavelength. And d is equal to d theta by d lambda. Therefore, from the usual grating formula, from the usual grating formula, we have d sine theta is equal to m lambda. m is equal to d sine theta is equal to m lambda small m is equal to 0, 1, 2, so on, an integer, where d is the distance between the rulings and the integer. m is the order of principal maximum. Small m is the order of principal maximum. Treating lambda and theta as variables. Treating lambda and theta are variables. The differential equation of 18.1, that means above equation leads to cos theta d theta cos theta d theta is equal to m by d d lambda where d is the distance between the rulings and the integer m is the order of principal maximum then lambda and theta is variables therefore the differential equation of this one leads to cos theta d theta d sin theta is equal to m lambda no then cos theta d theta is equal to m by d lambda that d take rhs side then it becomes m by d d, d lambda. The differential of above equation becomes cos theta d theta is equal to m by d d lambda. Therefore, the dispersion capital D is equal to d theta by d lambda. d theta by d lambda is equal to what ma? m by d into cos theta, which is the dispersion power of grading. Okay? Capital D is equal to d theta by d t is equal to m by d cos theta, which is the dispersion of a Grating. Next, resolving power of a grating. The resolving power R of a grating determines the smallest difference in wavelength, to, uh, smallest difference in wavelength delta lambda that a given grating can resolve in the nth order. Therefore, the quantity of one order to difference. That means R is equal to lambda by delta lambda is nothing but resolving power of grating. The inverse ratio of the difference in wavelength to the average wavelength of two radiations. The inverse ratio of the difference wavelength to the average wavelength of two radiations is called the resolving power. It is usually determined by the it is usually determined by the same Rayleigh's criterion that is used to determine the that is used to determine the resolving power of a lens. Therefore. If two principal magma are to be barely resolved, if two principal magma are to be barely resolved, they must have an angular separation. They must have an angular separation, delta theta. 
such that the maximum of one line such that the maximum of one line coincide with the first minimum of the other therefore the angular separation between principal maxima whose wavelengths differ by uh, theta lambda is given by delta theta is equal to m delta lambda delta theta is equal to m d lambda by d cos theta no in from the above dispersion grading only we are getting this one also delta theta or d theta is equal to m delta lambda by d cos theta using above equations only therefore the rayleigh really criterion requires that this is this be equal to the angular separation therefore the rayleigh really criterion requires that <coughs> this be able to this is equal to be angular separation between a principal maximum and it is adjust minimum for the mth order means this one okay equal to delta theta is equal to lambda by dn into cos theta where capital n is the total number of slits using above equations we get if theta is the angular position of the maximum of the uh, uh, mth order and theta plus delta theta that of the adjusting uh, adjoining minimum we have if theta is the angular position of the maximum of the order m and theta plus delta theta that of the adjoining minimum we have sin theta is equal to m lambda by t into sin of theta plus delta theta therefore m plus 1 by n into lambda by d sin theta cos delta theta plus cos theta sin delta theta explained by the form of sin of a plus b sin a cos b plus cos a sin b is equal to m plus 1 by n into lambda by d rhs as usual then delta theta is very small cos delta theta is nearly equal to 1 and sin delta theta is equal to delta theta if you are assuming that delta theta is very small cos delta theta is equal to 1 and sin delta uh, delta theta is equal to delta theta then substituting these values in above equation, we are having delta theta is equal to m lambda by dn cos theta, m lambda by dn cos theta. Then delta theta is equal to m lambda by dn cos theta, nothing but r is equal to lambda by delta m that equal to nm, just as above equation means so m plus 1 by n into lambda by d. Therefore, r is equal to lambda by delta lambda is the formula for resolving power of grating and uh, uh, what is dispersive power of grating my dispersion of grating d is equal to d theta by d lambda is dispersive power of grating and uh, resolving power of grate is ratio of wavelength to difference of wavelength lambda by delta lambda that equal to nm this is a resolving power of grating so that in this lesson, we discuss uh, resolving power of grating and uh, dispersive power of grating n number of slits over Fresnel and Fran Hopper diffraction over my today class. Next class, we will discuss next topic that is polarization. That is also one of the important lessons, ma. Easy and important. Seven, eight, nine lessons related to polarization only. Okay. Now you have class now 130. Interference diffraction completed. Ma. Next class, we will discuss polarization. All these are the properties of light only. Okay.